Okay, um, my name is Stephanie Grolick. I am an I am an actor, director, all that good stuff. Like stage management too. Um, but I'm a theater major up at Michigan University. Sure. Um, I got into theater in a really roundabout way because I started off doing kind of every single art except for theater. Dance when I was a little kid, like everybody does, you know, okay. like a little kid in a ballerina costume. Um, I did a lot of visual art, I still do a lot of that. And I did like choir and all that stuff. And actually, I think it started from choir into like musical theater because, you know, one of those kids that started off as an MT. And then the way I got into what my focus is now, more like acting and directing, was in high school, I didn't know that like you could be an assistant director or like the thought just hadn't occurred to me that like students could do that kind of thing. I was like, nah, that's an adult job. We, we don't do those things. And then my high school had a really big theater department and they were like, we're looking for production staff. And I was like, eh, hey, we'll do that thing. That sounds fun. And I really liked it. And I... I think that directing was kind of the synthesis of everything that I liked about theater because it's it's got it's like literally being able to like read a book and you know you've got that like movie going on in your head. No yeah, man, like if someone made a movie I want it to be exactly this way, except you get to do that. Which is cool. So you get to like take something, synthesize it with other people. That's a good question. She actually came from Israel and our family in general comes from like Morocco, the Middle East, and all that, and she's like, she's paler than I am. So it's interesting because, like, I identify as a white person, Jewish white person. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's also funny because there, it like my mother is an immigrant, so you, you, it's a yeah, like, like yeah. you know, it's funny. But I look white, so this is where we are. <laughs> this is what we're doing. My first show. Oh my god. Okay, first show that I was ever in. Get ready for this. It was Beauty and the Beast. I was a silly girl. Right? <laughs> um, so that was fun. I got to be a fangirl. It wasn't like sixth grade. It was a grand old time. How do I put this? I don't think it was any one particular show, but I think like every once in a while I'll like see a piece of theater or a movie or something performing arts, like even like a dance performance or something else, and I'll be like, oh, that made me feel something. This is what I want to keep doing. You know what I mean? Not one particular show stands out in my memory, but like I have like a number of like checkpoint shows where I'm like, I saw this and it made me want to do this, or I saw this and it reassured like, okay, this is this is worthwhile. Like that changed me as a person, so I want to keep doing this. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, I, so like I said, I started off in like a bunch of different arts that weren't theater, and one of those is violin. I've been playing the violin since I was like four. Five? I don't know. Whenever my hands were like big enough to do that. No, no, don't think I'm good. I'm like fine. I'm really okay. But um, I feel like now it's a trending thing, right? Like, it, and I'm guilty of this too. But like, um, directors, I feel like are having this phase where they're like, I'm gonna play, but it's gonna have like a live band in it. And I'm like, and I've done that. I did that for like Dead Man's Cell Phone, which is. <laughs> Oh man, what a good time. But so it's hilarious. So everyone's like looking for like violinists or like musicians with theater backgrounds or whatever. So like I've gotten like three violin credits not trying to get violin credits because that's like the trendy thing to do. Violin is kind of what got me into theater in high school because I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the first freshman year of high school, right? I came from um, a middle school that was, I had like 75 other kids in my class. And it was such a small school to the point where like, we had like, you know those gym auditoriums, the like gymatoriums, the autonasiums, like that's what PE marking lines on the floor, but it's also got like a stage and you're like, who thought of that? Um, so that was the kind of show that I did. So I was like, big fish, here we go. Yeah, and I got to high school and they were doing like Fiddler on the Roof and I was like, big fish, yeah, this, it's gonna be great, no sweat. And I, oh my God, there were so many people. I was like, there are more people that auditioned for this show. That was so terrifying, like my grade in middle school. So I chickened out totally. Like I did the audition, but I was like, oh, like it was, it was so bad. So I didn't get it. Uh, I don't know. I still want to try and get involved in theater. So I signed up to do orchestra pit, and I remember the the first the whole first year like I hadn't done other theater because I'd only known like musicals and I didn't. This was before I knew about like production staff and like yeah. assistant stage managing and all that <clears throat> stuff. So I was like musicals are my focus. Um, and being a part of it, I remember like the the pit kind of jutted out. It wasn't like under the stage, so it was like stage, pit. And I was on the end, so I could still see what was going on while I was playing. And I remember looking, and then like looking up at the stage, and I was always like, it was always really hard for me to like keep focused because I was always like so just enraptured by what was going on the stage. Yeah. And I think that, that actually was probably the moment where like, I looked at that and I was like, shoot, 
kind of want to do that. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Kinda, yeah, I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh, this isn't a profitable lifestyle. Like, you know what I mean? Where you just kind of like, it's like the, oh shit, I do want to do theater. University of Michigan, go blue. But like, um, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, yeah, I think blue is very sturdy, but lately I've been getting into yellow a lot because I feel like it's a very chipper color and it's a very sunny color. No, seriously. And it's like, I feel like sometimes, especially as theater people, we have a tendency to like get really wrapped up and we're like, oh yes, the work, the art. But on that, sometimes you just gotta like laugh it off and smile with it. So I don't know, yellow makes me feel like that. So I've been liking yellow. Probably uh, The Illusionist. It is a French animated film. It's a really good movie. Uh, animated French film about like okay. this, ven like this, um, this. Oh my god, this illusionist. Sorry, I was like magician. Mm -hmm. No, illusionist. It's this old timey film about this illusionist who realizes that like that particular art form is dying and becoming less popular and being replaced by other more like current and popular forms of performing arts, and so. It's kind of like, like he's, he's, he's really like the idea of a struggling artist. It's like this old man mm -hmm. kind of like going around vague European countries. <laughs> and there's basically no dialogue. Like it's, it's basically entire commu entirely communicated through pantomime and like gesture, which I think is just wonderful. Because um, you don't even notice. You leave that movie and you're like, oh, no one said anything in that, sh in that movie. Um, and he ends up finding this young girl at one of the bars he performs at who's like waiting and like cleaning and she's young enough to the point where she still thinks like all of his tricks are real so she ends up trying to like follow him because she thinks that he can like solve all of his problems and make everything better and there's a struggle of like she believes in me nobody else does so it's like indulgent for him to indulge her but also like you know her demands grow greater and greater and he can't keep up so it's a really wonderful like example of how something really naive and well-intending can become very toxic and also a very good look into like what being an artist and kind of like an old-timey profession feels like you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> but yeah roundabout way 10 out of 10 would recommend 10 out of 10 <laughs> so tell me Ooh, I uh, cried at that <laughs> but like I'm sorry finish your question <laughs> like, I will cry <laughs> So frequently, <laughs> like you won't even know. Oh my god, okay. It happens so often. I'm a big happy crier, so if a movie has, like, if, if, if a family is reunited, if a dog is reunited with a family, if two lovers are, like, reunions, I lose it. I don't know why I haven't had, like, hard separation anxiety in my life, but it makes me lose it. Um, okay, well, Mamma Mia 2 saw that three times, and I cried during every part of it. It's... Like, I, I have a very close relationship with my mom, and I love her so much, and she's she's my world, she's wonderful. And the whole movie is about this girl whose mom dies, and she's like trying to rebuild this hotel in her honor, and then gets pregnant in the same place that she was, and she sees her like dead ghost mom, like Meryl <laughs> Streep pops up in a church, and I'm like, that's it, we're done, like, um, it's over. Bap like, Jewish equivalent of baptizing my child, and my dead ghost mother showed up, mm -hmm. I would also lose my shit, like, it's a uh, tearjerker. Mama mia, too. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I've been figuring out this year, especially through like school and theater training and all that good stuff, is that like the roles that are most fun to play, I feel like, are the roles that are either completely opposite you or the roles that you're like, oh, this is me. And I think in in a way, yeah, in a way, um, got that human connection. I feel like. <laughs> If you look at a play from the right approach, you should be able to say that about everybody. Like, this is totally opposite of me, but I am also, could 100% be this person. I mean, like, in, in the <laughs> words of one of my acting teachers, human beings are too damn complex for anything else. <laughs> um, Dan Cantor, he actually doesn't sound like that, but it sounded like a dramatic sentence. Since this, this year, um, we were doing a bunch of scenes in acting, and um, we were doing, my partner and I were doing the scene from Dryland, which is an awesome play. Yeah, it's about these two young women, and like, trying it's about these two very um unlikely friends um to use a cliche um in high school and one of them is pregnant and tries to get and like enlist this other girl esther who i ended up playing um to do like a diy diy abortion and it's the, it's this crazy subtle like very realistic look into what that's like and it was a character Characters that are like yourself, I feel like, are almost so hard to play because it's like looking in a mirror and you're like trying to imitate yourself and you're like, oh, this is weird. They're most challenging. I don't know. What did I 
I do today? Oh, I took my sisters to the beach. Their names are Danielle and Sadie. Um, Sadie is 11, going on 12, and Danielle <laughs> is 15. Because I'm going back to school tomorrow. I'm going back to good old UMish. Oh my god, I think during the beginning I said Michigan University, which is false. I know, right? Shh! I took them to the beach um, because we wanted to spend time together before I went back to school. I love my sisters more than anything. They're so cool. If they saw this, they'd be like, no, that's not true. In a nutshell, if you want to be an actor or director or any part of theater, aside from stage management, you do kind of have to be an incredibly organization. If you're the kind of person that like color codes your life, go for stage management because they're very good at that. But if you want to become involved in performing arts, anybody can do it. Anybody could do it and I think everybody should try it at one point or another because it really, at the end of the day, I mean it's, it's a cliche, but it is about trying to understand people better and really trying to see the world through someone else's eyes and promote stories that we think other people should hear and can learn and grow from. I mean, if that's not a super powerful experience, I don't know what is. So I think just, just being a part of that in any way you can is beneficial. So I'd say go for it. Do it. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you. It was like... <laughs>